This is Art from Art of Shock, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Yes, here I am. Hey, Art, and that's my partner, Chris, and I'm Bruce. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, guys. How you doing, man? Good, and you? Pretty fantastic. You said you're out in LA. What's the uh, what's the Hollywood COVID scene like? Pretty bad, dude. It's pretty bad. Is it? People don't care, you know. And uh, it's just gonna get worse, you know, for everybody. It's a bad situation. What's it like being a musician and trying to uh, survive in in the climate like that? Well, we have nothing to do. The good news is that we can uh, sit down and write songs, you know, and work on ideas that uh, we didn't have to, time to work on before. Which is why I'm doing and many people, many of my friends are doing that because we have nothing else to do. That's what we've heard. A lot of people are taking advantage of it. But are you guys lucky enough to be all in the same area? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, the band, but most of the band, we live together. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. great. It's like a frat house. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Man, so what's, I, did what's that, the- I did that when I was uh, 18. I moved in with a band. And it was insane. The parties and the jamming and the police showing up because of the noise. (laughs) It was was something to do. (laughs) We don't have that problem, dude. Like, we've never had the police over. Really? You know, we're very loud. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The most epic party that you've had. At my house. At your house. Oh, well, it was uh, my birthday. It was also the uh, Finnish Midsummer party. And all my Finnish friends came over. You can just imagine, right? <laughs> I can't. I'm fucking Finnish, dude. <laughs> yeah, she, so yeah. She's in Finland as we speak. Yeah. Well, amazing. <laughs> well, you know what happens. I do. I completely do. I didn't know you had like a connection to Finland. Okay, so we don't know what happens if you want to enlighten us. No, you know, like some stuff like you cannot probably talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can talk about it on this podcast. Oh, yeah. You should have seen where we've been today. We've been everywhere. Earlier. Yeah. You know, a lot of drinking and fighting and uh, and public sex and fucking people shitting their pants. and uh, Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so the good stuff. <laughs> so are you Finnish as well? No, I'm not. But I have but a lot of friends. I have yeah, because Vina was trying to tell us about the uh, earlier about public saunas and the uh, the yeah. culture all around that. Yeah, the mixed sauna, and like we were starting another interview, and the guy comes in. Well, I can't remember if it was Chris or Bruce saying, "Like, is it very erotic, <laughs> sexual, <laughs> very sexual?" And the guy just comes in with that comment, <laughs> you know, not knowing at all what we're talking about. But no, boners are kind of frowned upon, I guess. Jesus. You know, you can't control your body, but <laughs> it's not about sex. The mixed sauna. It's actually a very desexualized situation. But I'm it's, sure that that happens, right? Because you're going to get somebody like me that all of a sudden is going to go boing. <laughs> well, you know, if you've even, like, attempted sex in a sauna one time, you know that it's not a good idea. Like, you know, all you get is, like, a migraine and some bruises on your knees. And <laughs> Oh, it. how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Art. <laughs> Art is ready to hang up if he hasn't already hung up. Okay. <laughs> no, but I agree. Like, uh, what all my friends tell me, like, uh, it's a very different culture, you know? Like, they're, they're not ashamed of nakedness, you know? They don't give a shit, actually, which is great. Yeah. I'm naked as we speak, and this is not even a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Anyway. Okay. So, shall so, we get back to the, to the band? The art of shock. <laughs> Chris? Yeah. Uh, so tell- uh, no, what yeah. we need is we we need the two sentence boardroom pitch for people who aren't familiar with your band. Well, we played dirty metal. <laughs> That's it. Hey. That's all you need to say. Dirty metal is the best. Yeah. I agree. So I know lots of people like the fully polished kind of stuff, and I've always been a fan of the we just talked to a an eighties kind of phenomenon. And I like that whole sleazy, dirty kind of thing. I like it a lot. Exactly. That comes from our heroes, even from uh, from Muddy Waters, you know? Yeah, right. absolutely. I 100% that, agree. That, that, they're rough around the ages, right? Like, it's like, um, it's a different feeling for me. 
So I think Chris will probably disagree with me on this, but I think that sometimes a lot of stuff is overproduced and overthought out nowadays instead of jumping in and playing. Does that make sense? Yeah, but uh, I mean, some stuff is great. You know, some stuff like uh, we couldn't have pulled that off in the past, you know? Right. Any production techniques, like, I mean, there's some great material out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no other way to produce it, right? Right. But uh, at the same time, you know, I prefer the old school rock yeah. and roll. Absolutely. So are you guys, when you record, are you like taking your guitar going chord by chord, making sure they're all in tune and then double track? We think a lot about tuning for sure. Um, our producer, Mark Lewis, and you know, he's obsessed with tuning. Yeah. I mean, I have very good ears. So like we, we made a great team. He doesn't nice. want anything out of tune, which I disagree sometimes, you know, I disagree with. Like, it, it's all about the performance. If it rings a little bit, you know, wrong, like, it doesn't matter. You still have the feeling there. What, but he wouldn't let anything go, you know. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I've worked on records um, with producers where we literally, the guitar player would hold the chord and strum the strings, and we would tune the strings, and we would cut those chords into the song. And then we move to the next chord. We tune that chord with like the producer would turn the tuning pegs. Mm -hmm. Then we'd go through the song and cut that chord. And we just work through the song that way. And then we would do a double pass of transitions. So that it didn't sound unnatural. And it was a fucking painful process. It's kind of the Mutt Lang uh, system, right? With Def Leppard and, uh, and his bands. Like he used to do that. And also lots of German bands like the Scorpions, right? Used to record like that. Yeah. I yeah. heard horror stories about making a chord like a four guitars, everybody playing a single note. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? We didn't do that, but man, we, we cut chord by chord all. It was a regular thing. Doing oh a song God. doing a song to get it perfectly in tune that way and perfectly in time that way, it took like each song was like a day and a half just to get rhythms done. Yeah, it's yeah, it's intense, right? Yeah, it's it, it's it burns your fucking brain. I've seen I've, I've seen I've seen yeah. bands lose their fucking mind over it because they just yeah. can't take it. The monotony. It's no fun, right? You, you're yeah. used to you know to feel it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is the most boring thing I ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah, what's what? What are your thoughts then on the Evertune bridge? Um, I used it once. It's not terrible, especially in those situations and with those producers that are really, really anal about it. Yeah. Can you ever tune when you have one of those ringing chords? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, Instead sorry. One, chord, one chord, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll stop the tech talk, Bruce. I'll let you go. No, or I know Rita. you're getting nerdy. Rita, go ahead. No, no. I was just thinking like, okay, that's going to burn through your brain, but for sure it's going to burn through your budget as well, though, isn't it? Like, I don't know about you guys, but at least for my band, it's not like we have the opportunity to just use endless and an endless amount of studio days. <laughs> There's a fucking budget and you need to stay within it. So I don't know if that's like the best way to achieve the best you can with a X amount of money. Oh, the, the records I'm talking about, though, they were major label records records for universal so, yeah 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 so you know it's, it's different when you know you have a producer that the, just the producer's fee is seventy five thousand yeah. dollars so art would you say to you that whether whether like you know this sort of technical accuracy or whether like uh, the feeling of it is more important in your music i think you need a balance of both you need to know what you're doing for sure, but you also have to perform, you know, I th which I think is the most important thing. Um, actually, even in super technical music, you know, the performance is the most important part. So you need both. You need your, um, your technical chops really tight and really honed down. And also you need to feel it, right? And create something, some atmosphere, something right. special. Yeah. Do you find it difficult translating if it gets so technical in the studio, translating that into the live setting? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was thinking. You're like, yeah, it's important to, you know, perform and so on. But when, when I think about the most, like, you know, technical bands that I've gone and seen, definitely it's not like it's a party on stage. No, no, no. They're just, like, you know, concentrated on delivering those complex 
collections of notes <laughs> in in the way that they were recorded on the album you know yeah, like, it's fucking torture for them you know like for many people like even for me with some riffs you know every once in a while you're going to create a riff um you know in the studio sting over it and then when you get to practice they're like what the fuck did i do <laughs> 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 And I guess it's the same with solos. Awesome, really. you, can, you can write this kick-ass solo and then you can just like, you know, chop it up like you were talking about in the studio. Like you can do this bit and do that bit and then just sew it all together. But then the live show comes and you're supposed to do that then and boom, what are you going to do? For me, especially like uh, playing and singing. Yeah. There's some, some stuff that's very counterpointy, right? Oh and my God. Like, Shit, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> it's where this side of your brain and this side of your brain are closing each other. <laughs> well, if you, if you do fuck up on stage, how do you handle it? Well, you, you have to ignore it. If you start thinking about it, you're going to fuck everything else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Does it, is it like a, do you ha consciously have to push it out of your head or, mm. or does it just come naturally? Like everybody fucks up, I don't care, and move on. I think the beginning is... Um, um, a conscious act, but then you get used to it, you know, you just ignore yeah. it. Little fuck up. You just ignore it. You fuck up so much, huh? <laughs> Maybe. No, you don't know. <laughs> thing, right? It doesn't matter as, as long as the show is good, as the performance is good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this is exactly what I meant with the whole, is it more important to sort of get the technical bits right or can you just like override that with the energy and the emotion? Yeah, I mean, I, you cannot play like shit. It's what I was saying. It has to be a there has to be a balance, right, between the two. Right. True. 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 So, are you missing the stage a lot? What? Are you missing the stage a lot, or are are you guys been, yeah. been able to play? Been trying to get over that no, depression, you know. Yeah. Mostly by by writing and creating new stuff. Right. Are you doing any live streaming stuff or anything like that? Not yet. But yeah, we're planning some. Uh, uh, we have some surprises for the future. Have you been watching any any live streams? Actually, no. Not really? a single. I have been like uh, playing a lot. I don't watch uh, any shows. You know, I don't surf the internet often. That's really? good. That's a good thing, I think, because uh, I'd be more productive if I didn't do that as well. Amen. And I'm but not I got even a religious guy. <laughs> right, but I got freaking Chris sending Chris sending me all kinds of conspiracy theory shit, and then oh, I'm down yeah. a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm down a rabbit hole, and everything I was doing is gone. My my conspiracy yeah. theory is: here's me opening a beer. <laughs> 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 oh yeah! I was and wondering: is that a beer bong behind you, just above that symbol? No. Oh, That's a, uh, an Iron Man mask. Ah, I see. I was like beer bong. <laughs> have you never heard of a beer bong? Yeah, I have. I'm just curious how you like thought you picked one out in this studio there. I'm from Canada. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we look for them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys have planned? Are you rebooking that? I know you're supposed to be out with Sepultura, right? Yeah. Are you rebooking? I had a friend, a good friend of mine, and Chris's was supposed to be the tour manager on that. Rory Romano. Oh, Rory was um, on that tour. Yeah, he was the TM on that, and then it all got bagged. So is that rebooking? Yeah, actually, uh, as far as I know, it has been rescheduled for uh, next March. That's a that's, that was yeah that was a big gig, right? That's a great to go with them. Yeah, it'd be great to go out with Sepultura. That's a classic yeah. act. Yeah, we were super bummed, you know, when all this yeah. all of this shit happened. Literally, the week when the lockdown started. Yeah, yeah, that, that thing got canceled really quickly, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, the I remember that. <laughs> bye, bye, dude. Yeah, I remember. Like, I'm friends with Rory, like I said, and he was like, "Shit, I don't know what I'm going to do now." My whole he had it all planned out and you know ready to roll, being the TM, and it got all screwed up. It's the same thing with the album, you know. It was supposed to um to drop uh, a week onto the tour. So yeah, we got over really hard. Oh, that's God, sucks. That, that sucks. sucks. Not having the tour to back up the record. Mm -hmm. but, but you know, like, with underground metal bands, it's your only uh, marketing tool, basically. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so much, it's fucked up. Uh, do you have, like, any digital plan Bs to sort of try and at least make up for the lost marketing? Oh, for sure. I was, um, that's what I was saying. We have a, uh, a few ideas that we're developing mm -hmm. right now. You know, it's also expensive. 
Have yeah. To, you have to have a very good idea and you have to, um, you know, fit into a budget, and which is right. the hard part, right? You know, you can have all the crazy ideas in the world. Um, I heard somebody told me about the behemoth um, live stream, right? Oh, my yeah. God. That was fantastic. And horses and fucking, uh, dude, yeah. We can yeah. do that. Right. Yeah. And Wait, apparently, they so. said that they spent more money on that stream than they did on the album. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I guess nobody has seen it. It is absolutely, if you get a chance, it's unbelievable. It's like a movie. I mean, it's seriously like a Hollywood movie. It's great. I love every it when people's ambition levels are fucking high. It's amazing. Yeah, you know? everything. I think everything, what's his name, Nurgle or Nurgal, or however you pronounce it, I think pretty much everything he does is uh, super top notch. Yeah, it's but, he's got, but he's got the money behind him, so. Right. Anyway, I don't have anything else. Chris, where are you at? I, I don't have anything else either. I really appreciate you taking the time and chatting with us today. I and, agree. And, oh, I do have one other thing. Where can people go find your band? Well, we're uh, all over um, all the social media, all the uh, you know, Spotify and so Apple Music, and, like literally everywhere. What's your, Just, web, what's your website address? Artofshock.com. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, nobody goes there anyways. <laughs> yeah, but can, can they buy merch there? Oh, yeah, for sure. So go buy a merch or go buy yeah, a t-shirt at Art of Shark. That will help a little bit, yeah. Pretty much anything. Just support music. And if you want to see it come back, I think that's going to be really important. Absolutely. Just listen to it on Spotify. You know, that helps. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's because, like, yeah, it's uh, like when you said listen to it on Spotify, it helps. It does because it's funny, like, you know how it doesn't often like translate into streams, like your good reviews or your, even your Facebook following. We were just interviewing uh, a band that I won't name uh, that had like, I don't know, 20,000, 25,000 people following them on Facebook. And then they had like 200 monthly listeners on Spotify. So definitely go listen to those tracks on Spotify. It does help and put them on your playlists and spin them over and over and over again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for taking the time, man. Sorry about the bumbling in the beginning. That was all Chris's fault. Always. All right. oh. Yeah. But I appreciate it. And good luck with uh, the record and stay safe. And hopefully we'll catch you soon. All right, guys. Thank all you. Right, be well, my friend. See you later. Bye. later. All right. Bye. Uh, hello out there. Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing you.